almost halfway there. Thank you for joining us on the web. Uh, really exciting finalist presentation. So let's bring our next young scientist up from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Uh, let's welcome Samu. How are you, my friend? Uh, okay. <laughs> it is gonna get a whole heck of a lot better because I saw your presentation already and they're gonna love it, so have fun. Thank you. In a world drenched in technology, we've become dependent, oh, I'm sorry. In a world drenched in technology, computers have become a part of our everyday lives. We use them to do everything, to communicate, to learn, to create. But according to a report filed by the US Census, there's a group of 12 million individuals within the US alone that suffer from some form of physical disability. These individuals are inhibited from their access to technology. And because of that, can struggle to often live normal lives. And here's the fact. These individuals make up one of the largest minority groups within the US. And it's a group that you and I could become a part of any second. So how do we make sure in an age like today that in a world where our abilities to use technology have become as important as our abilities to read or write? I introduce to you PIF. PIF is an application looking to revolutionize the way we as humans interact with technology following three simple principles. PIF looks to be affordable, accessible, and usable. PIF is, or the Perception-Based Interaction Framework, is an application looking to allow users to interact with their computers using head movements and facial expressions. Because of this, users are able to touch, type, or click, all using movements unique to them. And PIF is all based off of computer algorithms. It doesn't require anything more than a simple webcam. PIF is also an open source project. Anyone who's interested can access the source code directly and make their own edits in order to make PIF fit their needs. PIF has a built-in plugin system and allows for an easy to use and well-documented well way to make their own plugins, such as facial voice recognition or hand gestures. And as you'll see in a second, the use with glasses. PIF is all possible due to a concept of machine learning known as computer vision. PIF's entire comprehension pipeline can be broken up into three simple steps. The first step is a process of finding the overall general location and presence of a face. This is often a process that can in be influenced by lighting, and PIF actually looks to work around this by using the gradients of light rather than direct pixel intensities. The second phase is a process of feature detection. PIF looks to outline the features of a user's face using 48 facial landmarks through an iterative regression tree, and so you'll see through multiple phases, PIF will be able to come up with a definitive answer um, outlining a user's face. The third part is ma mapping the user's input. Using this data we're able to collect, we can either directly measure a user's facial expressions or, relative through a 3D model, we can almost make an accurate estimate as to where a user is looking. So throughout this process, I used design thinking to develop a product that was not only relatively accurate or desirable, um, to a user. A part of this was reaching out to a friend, Sam. Sam was a big component of my first phase, understanding the problem. U using the experiences Sam was able to give me, um, I was able to break down my problem into three main parts. Building an adaptable application, tracking facial features, and then building a, pr uh, a usable um, user experience. My first phase within ideation and prototyping was to get up on my feet using feature detection. This included using Python to quickly create a prototype that would allow me to detect features. But as you can see, those little red squares are supposed to be eyes, so there was a bit of a fault within the feature detection. And so I moved on to using C++. Not only did it allow me a wider range of tools to utilize, but it allowed me to refine my application down to a much more accurate and usable solution. 
And so I decided to test my application in three different ways, looking at classifier efficiency, improving user input, and rendering optimization. Within classifier efficiency, a part of a usable application is actually its performance. And a big help was using something known as 3M retroreflective tape, which was able to allow me to entirely skip the process of facial detection and directly use something um, that the user is able to create for themselves, such as glasses. And so, as of right now, PIF mostly acts as a form of proof of concept, that interaction with computers doesn't have to be so um, analog. It can be a lot more organic using software. And so PIF wants to help bridge the interaction gap between disabled users and a world of possibility. Over the course of working on my 3M project, I learned that innovation is not only a process of noting an observation within the world around you, but going out, finding a solution, and applying it. So, thank you. Samu, fantastic. I think uh, the future has arrived. Um, with that being said, uh, I'm just curious as to this particular project. Uh, was this exclusively work that you had kind of dreamed up in your head? Did you talk to some experts externally? I mean, really, what was it that you contributed? And were there others that contributed as well? Uh -huh. So the concept of computer vision is actually relatively not new. I mean, companies have been trying to implement feature and face detection within applications for a long time. So I actually had the ability to access a bountiful amount of knowledge from great minds before me. And so um, there was actually a lot of online papers that had already been researched. And there's actually an open source library known as um, OpenCV or Open Computer Vision that I was able to utilize to sort of jumpstart and kickstart my process looking at feature detection. And so um, what I kind of focused on with my application was sort of applying these facial detection methods to create a user experience that was able to be custom tailored to an individual and sort of make it easier to use. Samu, great, that great presentation, absolutely. Now, it's been my experience in my life that innovations that have been developed for disabled people find their way into the general population. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to discuss how can PIF be used to improve human productivity? Um, that's honestly uh, one of the first things that comes to people's minds, um, mostly because um, PIF is honestly the future, computer vision um, and software is honestly the way um, human interaction will end up be um, going towards because it allows us to be a lot more organic. Rather than interacting with some form of physical device, we're able to sort of use movements unique to us. And so I think um, looking at the future, um, I feel like PIF could really become applicable in industries such as space, um, space and flight or industries where we typically need to be utilizing technology alongside um, really labor-intensive human tasks. Simu, congratulations. Thank really you. bravo. So well done. Um, I'm wondering about, and I was so inspired by the pictures that you had with Sam mm -hmm. and in the prototyping process of, of you and, a, and really getting the user's experience. Can you tell us a little bit more about him and, and what that process was like working with him and the feedback he gave you. Yeah, Sam was definitely an, a major inspiration starting off with PIF. And so um, Sam was really able to almost act as a, um, not only um, almost a feedback loop, but PIF, um, Sam was kind of able to point me in the right directions because he really stressed the need for an adaptable solution. Because after working with Sam, um, he really, um, uh, couldn't use a lot of the conventional solutions we had today. So he kind of steered me um, into looking at how we could make PIF into more of a modifiable and versatile application rather than something that just had one single intended use. So really cool and interesting. And I, I, I almost want to walk up there and just kind of stand in front of your um, <laughs> computer. Yeah, so it's really neat. Um, so I've... Uh, played around with Google Glasses before, yeah. and, and I think that there's some similarities there. Uh -huh. But um, Google Glasses are kind of out of the reach of most people because they're kind of expensive. I'm wondering about, um, you know, if you're looking into the future, 
do you think that this will be something that will be economically feasible for our handicapped or um, people with disabilities? Um, you know, what do you what do you think might be a limitation moving forward financially for people who would want to use this? Um, financially, um, that was one of my um, sort of design criteria that I kind of looked at with PIF. I wanted to create a solution that was not only um, affordable but also accessible. Um, and so the great thing with software is the fact that we have the ability to hand it out for free. PIF is currently an actual open source project I've released to the public. And so um, that's actually the wonderful aspect of software. And so financially, I think it really comes down to um, when we start using technologies such as infrared or something like that, when, um, such as introduced in the new iPhone um, to be mapping user faces or whatnot. And so, yeah. Now. Can I see this real quick? Yeah. Is it working? I can't see out of the side of my head. <laughs> yeah. Somebody take a picture, quick. That is really, how are you feeling now? Um, somewhat better. Somewhat better, you should feel great, that was great. So uh, we are gonna, this is the halfway point, we are going to take a five minute break, so for those of you that are watching uh, the webcast, we'll be back in five minutes.